if your boss comes and say, we want to A-B test this, sometimes I want to start with collecting the, <laughs> the name first. We delete these methods, they're empty. We want to first collect the, the username and then collect the rest. OK. We have the sign up flow A and the sign up flow B. Where is it? Sign up A. OK. And sign up flow B. We use the same view controllers, we just change the order. So we start, let's say, with the VC2. And it will complete with communication step completed. And you will then ask for the name. So first we get the two and we complete with the communication step completed. And then we show VC1, which we'll call name step completed with the name step and the communication step. Mm -hmm. Then we will show username completed. With the username, name step, step and communication step, communication step. Is this correct? So username, that's communication and name step. Oh, the order is wrong. Yeah. We have sign up o, uh, A and sign up flow B. Yeah. So this one asks the name first, and this one should ask the phone first. Yeah. Makes sense? And they all, at the end, will have the complete user with everything you need. Yeah, so very flexible stuff. Yeah, very, very flexible. Yeah. Makes sense? Don't need data yeah. as well. Oh, that's so 32 goes away, right? We don't capture anything. Oh, yeah, I forgot this. <laughs> we don't yeah, need this so step. You, you don't have any mutation as well going on, just passing values through closures. Just keep passing data forward. Yeah. And the important thing to notice here as well is that the closures that we're passing values are self contained in the flow, right? The view controllers know nothing about any other step. Mm -hmm. Right, the completion closures in the view controllers, they just communicate the data for that view controller, for that screen. That's that's key to understand. Yeah. Because that's how we you can compose everything inside this flow class. 